Did you ever think you were made it? I feel I'm so close I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Value payment, giving value's contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to hate. It's how they run, homie. Look what I become. I'm the I'm the one. Yeah. <clears throat> What a night last night oh my God. was. Was that crazy or what? My Started voice. at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be four hours. It's midnight. <gasps> people are not leaving. We're asking people to live. If you missed it, do not miss the next live podcast we do at 5990 Federal. Uh, matter of fact, if you want to be added to the list with the next guest, the, the moment we announce, the VIP goes first. Uh, if you want to be added to the list, last time we had Giuliani, Dave Rubin debate, wow. screaming, hollering, a meme. If you, we can show this meme, mm -hmm. this is this is actually what the, the mayor said last night, and he said, "I don't know what a meme is." If you can show this, Rob, <laughs> but I know what. I know what a dick is. I, so, <laughs> these are line well, of the night. You, you had to be there. It, it was, was so nice of Rudy to have you on his podcast. You know, pal. yeah, <laughs> he allowed you to maybe get a couple yeah. words in. Exactly. That was very, it was great. He very was. But by the way, if you guys, if you guys want to get the notice for the next one when we're doing this, remember text the word podcast to three one zero three four zero one one three two. Rob, let's put that in the chat in the comment mm -hmm. section as well. <laughs> text the word podcast to three one zero three four zero one one three two to be to know the moment we announce the next live because last night mm -hmm. was absolutely epic yeah but by the way i mean i'm gonna give three shout outs shout out to dave rubin and rudy giuliani it was just awesome it was great hanging with those guys we had dinner before the podcast having fun rudy's lady dave's friends it, it was awesome the value tanners that showed up i mean we've got such an awesome audience awesome base that we got whether they love me or hate me or all of us they just it's always respectful smart intellectual we've got such a a great crew. And then our crew. Shout out to the team, man. Oh, my God. I mean, whether it's Eric, Jorge, Kelly, Mario. To say they crushed Malik, Malik would Mike, Deli, just it the was squad sick. is doing good. And Rob over here. Fake Malik Mike, over Rob, here. Mike, Rob, everybody. It was just, I'm, just, I'm very proud of the team. And how impressed were you guys with Giuliani? 80 years old. I, every, I was waiting like 78, bro. Don't go there. My bad. I'm... I'm uh, Dave went there. Dave's like, I don't think we need to have an 80 year old yeah. president. <laughs> and he opened his mouth. I'm like, hey, 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 yeah, hey, Dave. Yeah. But he was <laughs> sitting right like, next compa to you. Compare him to like a Biden. But Pat, he's well spoken. Yeah, he's long winded. Yeah. But everything was, was on point. And one funny thing, I actually saved it for the end of the night. I got him in the cigar lounge and he's sitting there and it's like, Pat, smoke. It's like mafioso. I go, I go, hey, uh, hey Mayor, I have, uh, I'm from New York. My name is Vincent. And he's like, shakes my hand. I go, Thank you for, as a New Yorker, you cleaned up the streets. You did everything. My family, you know, they're happy, but there is one problem. And he's like, what's that? All of his team turns around. I go, you got rid of all the prostitution on 42nd Street. And he's like nodding. And I go, my sister hasn't worked since. <laughs> and everybody's like, what the hell? And I go, we want answers. And he laughs. He goes, oh, you're the comedian. I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, give me your sister's number. I'm going to call <laughs> I'm gonna call her personally. But make what sure a, she but get her yeah, back yeah. to work on but, the streets. But a night from from beginning to end, it was just it's one of those nights where you sit back and you're like, holy yeah. shit, we did. It, it was a great night. So last night was a lot, a lot of politics, a lot of politics. Today, mm -hmm. we're gonna talk uh, business. Musk had a few comments to Chuck Schumer uh, after Trump's arrest. That's semi politics. Pelosi event turns chaotic. That is semi. Politics, anti-war protesters. Uh oh. But there's uh -oh. a few things going on with business here. Private payrolls rose by 145,000 in March, well below expectation. ADP says higher March jobless claims add to sign of cooling labor market. Job cuts are almost up 400 percent this year as jobless claims rise. Bank failures, high inflation, rising rates is the resilient job market about to crack. That's a WSJ uh, Wall Street Journal story. Gen Z is sick and tired of their jobs. Uh, bosses want hard workers. This is also a Wall Street Journal story. Check this out, folks. Boss want hard workers, so they're hiring older people. Okay, It's a shot at Ooh. younger people. Twitter labels NPR as state-affiliated media. You got to see this. Mm -hmm. Walmart says 65% of their stores will be service, serviced by automation in three years. Let me say that one more time. 65% of their stores will be serviced by automation in three years. Not 30 years, not 20 years, not 10 years, not five years, in three years. Boomers home buying bonanza. Luxury home sales plunge 45% with Miami and Hampton, Hampton's 
hitting the hardest. You know we're going to be making some aggressive offers in the next mm-hmm. couple of months. Let's go. California residents need to make this much money to be happy. Wait till you see what this number is for Californians to be happy. But before we go find out how to make Californians happy, let me give a quick shout out to our sponsors. Masterworks, at a crazy time like this with everything that's going on with Silicon Valley Bank with, I'm watching Jamie Dimon. They're asking him a question. Do you think Jamie, just yesterday, do you think Jamie, a few other banks are going to go out of business? And how, Well, you know, there may be a few other banks. The way he just said it is like, yeah, I mean, it's not like really a big deal. There may be a few other banks going out, but it's going to be okay. It's going to be. Did you see that the way he yeah. said it? Translation, yeah, I'm going to go shopping pretty soon. Exactly. And he, he has <laughs> (laughs) all the money in the world to be able to do that. The one thing that is becoming talked about by a lot of people in the investment world is alternative investments, alternative assets. And one of them is art. Just to kind of give you an idea what happened last year. Last year was the best auction year ever where the highest total big three auction houses did $18 billion. Last time inflation was this high, contemporary art appreciated at an average of, you ready, 20% Per year, so these guys here at Masterworks, they got now nearly six hundred sixty thousand members. You know, it's by invitation only. You have to wait to get into the system of what they have going on. What you're able to to do is you can buy Picasso painting, but rather than you buying the whole thing, you get to buy a share of the Picasso painting. You get to buy a share of the Banksy. They do all the paperwork. They do all that stuff. You just go and you buy stock into it, and then if it appreciates, you can sell it. Hmm. And uh, they have a system for it. Everything is done by the SEC. So if you guys want to learn more about these guys, approved by the SEC, meaning they're doing, they're qualified with the SEC and broken into shares. If you want to learn more about Masterworks, uh, and to get an invitation, l- uh, click on a link below masterworks.art forward slash PBD podcast. Once again, masterworks.art forward slash PBD podcast. Purchase shares and great masterpieces like P- Pablo Picasso, Banksy, Andy Warhol, and more. So let's get right into it. Tom, private payrolls rose by 145,000 jobs and 145,000 in March. Well below expectation, ADP says. Okay, so this was a, a topic that everybody was talking about the last 24 hours. Um, this is down from an upwardly revised 261,000 in February, down below Dow Jones' estimate of 210,000. The first quarter hiring averaged around 175,000 jobs a month, a sher- sharp reduction from the average of 397 just a year ago in first quarter. Okay, according to ADP's chief economist. Nella Richardson, the March payroll data is one of several signals that the U.S. economy is slowing down. Employers are pulling back from a year of strong hiring and pay growth, with pay growth now inching down. Job growth was almost evenly split between services and goods producing firms, which is unusual. The U.S. economy is heavily service oriented, so the services sector generally produces much stronger hiring gains. Tom, why should we care about this number? So there's a couple numbers to care about this morning. And first of all, happy Good Friday to everybody. And hopefully we give you some good ideas and some things to use with these stats as you manage your life and your business. There's a couple things going on here, Pat. Do you ever have like your favorite basketball team plays and you see a couple things that happen and what happened maybe at the net really started like 45 seconds ago at the other end of the court and things were forming and they come together or it's your favorite football team and you see something happen. You say, well, it really wasn't the touchdown. You have to go two plays before that. Momentum being built up. Correct. And right. things happening. Well, here's here's what's interesting happening. And, and Rob, if you could be ready with the chart I sent you. Right now, there are three things that are moving together right now that are very bad. It is the change in job openings is dropping. So number the number of job openings is dropping. When we saw the uh, layoffs a week ago with Meta, remember part of the Meta was, well, we're laying off 4,000 more people, but we're canceling 5,000 open jobs. So people that day that went online looking, hey, Meta's got like 5,000 engineering jobs. Poof, they were gone. Mm. So they call that net 9,000. So they eliminated 9,000 jobs. So those job openings are going away at an increasing rate, number one. And number two, the private payrolls rising less than expected means there was hiring, but less hiring than was expected, number two. And then number three, the percent change in quits is dropping through the floor. 
Let me explain quits. The government actually tracks the number of people that quit jobs, and this is before they get an unemployment check. Because when your Social Security number is with uh, the IRS mm-hmm. and you're going to get a W-2, yep. they know who you work for. And if you change jobs at the end of the year, you get two W-2s, one for this job, one for that job. So the government can track when your Social Security number moves from one company to another, and they call that a quit or a job change. And so they get the stats. <clears throat> so what you have, everything coming together here, um, there's a chart that if you, can they see that right now? Perfect. So you take a look at this. This is by regions. And there's a government chart that you can look at anytime you want called JOLTS, J-O-L-T-S, which is Job Openings and Labor Turnover Survey. And it'll tell you like the temperature of your region of what's going on for the job economy. And right now, Job openings are down, lowest since 2021. Layoffs are up, and it's not just tech. And quits are down. So people with jobs are not quitting at the same rate they were in any of the previous three years, Pat. Remember when it was fashionable to quit, walk across the street, tell them, and I want to work from home, and I want to bring my dog to work, and I only want to work four days, all those things, and I want 20% more, and employers were kind of desperate for workers, and so during COVID, sometimes they said yes. So the workers kind of had this leverage point, and as you've said on the podcast, a lot of times workers overplayed their hand, because three years later, they're looking for layoffs, and the boss is saying, okay, who took me to the bank? What's who- unique about this, though, Tom? So w- what's unique about this? What What is the same? These, all of these these things coming together are saying that we have a very soft job market right now, and you've got the Wall Street Journal, CNBC, and the official business magazine of China, Forbes, they're all saying the same thing, <laughs> saying, look out. The word is look out. It's like this is, think of it this way, Pat. There is a check engine light on the jobs part of the U.S. economy. We haven't stalled and we haven't pulled over yet, but when you take a look at everything here, job openings down, Fewer people hired and fewer people quitting. That means the entire job market is nervous. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe let me read this other I stat. So th- this kind of gives you a little bit of, of what you're trying to say. Job cuts are almost up 400% this year as jobless claims rise. Okay, so th- this is a specifics. The job cuts have nearly sharpened, sh- uh, risen sharply with roughly... Job cuts have uh, sh- uh, risen sharply with roughly 270,000 job cuts so far this year, 396% increase from last year. What was that percent? 396%. Oh, so that's big. <laughs> that's a very big number on what they're talking about. The tech sector was hit the hardest for job cuts, according to accounting for 38% of all the layoffs this year. Financial companies came in second, accounting for 11% of layoffs. Giants such as Amazon, Google, and Meta fired over 10,000, and it's not even slowing down. Adam, you were going to say something. Yeah, well, look, if you're anything like me, like I'm reading all these reports right here, and if you focus on all this, it is so easy to get anxious and stressed out. Like if you just read any of these headlines, J.B. Diamond warns of the banking crisis has raised the odds of recession. U.S. health system will go bankrupt the next few years. More signs pointing towards an eminent slowdown. Private payrolls rose 154,000 below below expectations. Higher jobless claims. More jobs cuts. More jobs cuts. Bank failures. High inflation. It's like, holy shit, what does this mean for me? Right? Because at the end of the day, Tom is more of a macro guy and I'm more of a personal finance guy. You could take all this stuff and you have to look in the mirror and be like okay what am i going to do you know how they say that like degrees pay fees and skills pay the bills you have to look in the mirror and and see am i where i need to be skill wise am i you know warren buffett says the number one way to be inflation proof or recession proof is to actually just be good at your job yeah okay so with all this chaos going on in the economy it's so easy to feel overwhelmed. Like I'm sure Vinny's head's about to explode with all these numbers. I'm going to throw up. But but if you're Vinny, yeah. if you're Rob, if you're me, are you showing up to work every day? Are you putting in the work? Are you improving? Are you outworking? Are you outstrategizing? And that's the only way to outlast in a rough economy. Because every every day there's a new report. The economy is a recession. Inflation. Actually, we're getting better. Oh, no. Yeah. Hold on. Stock market. Bitcoin up, down. Yeah. I don't know what to make of it. But if I'm you, I have to take a deep breath and be like, okay, what can I do to control what's going on? You know, they say that there's two things in life. 
things that matter and things that you can't control or where you can focus mm. is where those two things intersect. You can't control everything and not everything matters, but where they diverge is where you should focus. So I would sum it up, step back from the macro and, and thank you for the nudge is if you've got a good job, keep it. Right now is the wrong time to walk across the street for a 5% difference in salary. If you've got, if, show some loyalty. If you own a business, and so many people, so many value tainers out there are business owners. When we had our last live event, it's like 70% of people in the audience were business owners. And thank you for your support. Right now is a time to look around, and if you need to make an upgrade of a key position, you probably have a hungry person that might show up at the yeah. door as opposed to a couple years ago. So maybe now's the time to make an upgrade, and now's the time to show some love to your great people and the people that maybe were pains. It, you may be opportunities to upgrade them now. And, and Pat, you've we've had this conversation many a times. I know we brought this up a couple podcasts ago about whether it's good time to ask for a raise, stay loyal, loyalty, what's being rewarded, you know, over COVID. Things were so up, things that went down, but I know you have strong feelings on what employees should be doing in this type of situation and how employers should respond to that, right? Yeah, look, I mean, I understand the message you're given. Your message is, hey, you know, uh, uh, be careful reading a lot of these stories because you're going to be scared and you're going to be this and, you know, focus on yourself. And all. Yeah, you're right. All of that stuff is fine. But people are here because they actually want to know, like, what's going to happen to the economy, right? They're, they're here because they want to get our feedback, our opinion on, is this the time? Are we getting close to it? What should we do? And, you know, they get to mess, make a decision for themselves. We don't have the answers. We're just processing, mm -hmm. having conversations to get. I can tell you, this is a real issue, okay, with unemployment. This is a real issue with unemployment. Uh, they've been they've been worried about this for a minute, and even Wall Street Journal here says bank failures, high inflation, rising rates is the resilient jobs market about to crack. Because for the longest time, if you remember the last uh, uh, speech that Biden gave, which what do you call it when the president's giving a speech from uh, from uh, the 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 House? What do you call State that? State of the State Union. State of the yeah. Union. Yeah. And all he bragged about was what unemployment is at three and a half percent. Yeah. I've added more jobs yeah. than yeah. any emperor in history. Yeah. You're the president, sir. Yeah. <laughs> president. Yeah. So, but by the way, but so, so here's the problem. What do you do when that's now gone, right? The U.S. labor market, according to Wall Street Journal, has been resilient despite the pandemic and economic risks, with employers adding 5.6 million jobs since the start of 2022 which is a good thing to talk about if you're campaigning. Mm -hmm. However, recent banking industry turmoil has raised concerns about whether the labor market momentum will slip. Quitter confidence has declined gradually since April 2022. Okay, The key word, quitter confidence, uh, indicating that workers are less confident in their ability to job hop. That's the key here, what Tom talked about just a minute ago than they were a year ago. Shorter hours amongst private sector workers could indicate that businesses are growing cautious and might trim hours before laying off workers. The diffusion index, which is a gauge of broad-based job gains and losses across industries, fell to its lowest since 2020 uh, in February of 2023. Real-time job postings data, which employment and websites could offer timely clues about, about employers' future hiring intentions with some economic econ economists suggesting that companies may pull down job postings without laying off workers in response to slowing sales and heightened uh, uncertainty. Okay, so we recently, you know, I'll give you an idea. For us, even at home office, we're running a company. So when the company says, we're shifting, the company shifted technology, okay, company working with shifted technology for about 90 days. During those, it was about 60 days, 70 days. During those 60, 70 days, we couldn't hire anybody. We couldn't hire anybody, okay? Because the system was updating. Perfect. During that 60, 70 days, if you can't hire anybody, normally if you, if you lose somebody, what do you do? You hire somebody. Mm -hmm. You replace them. If you lose two people, you replace them, right? But if you, and, and that happens for a week, for a month, for two months. Let's just say you lose five people. You can't replace those people if there's a freeze, right? And you can't hire for that 60, 70 day period. Well, imagine if companies are not only letting people go, but they're no longer even hiring new people. What's gonna start happening is the job that was being done by 100 people now needs to get done by 90 people, 
by 80 people, hmm. by 70 people, by 60 people, by 50 people. Overworked. Which means, which means some of these companies, it's either overworked, but there's a second thing to it, Vinny. Here's a second thing, which is scary to workers. The scary thing to workers is the following. When companies realize, wait a minute, we're getting everything done with 60 employees, and we were doing it at 100, and we don't even have to do um, uh, overtime. Yeah, we were, the additional 40 employees we had, we were spending, I don't know, $2 million a year. Now we're just paying $400,000 in overtime. We're still saving $1.6 million, and we're doing it with 60 employees. We don't need to go hire those 40 people back. Maybe we had a lot of employees here who were really not doing shit. shit. <laughs> You're right. There you go. That's wow. the problem because there's no more hide and go seek, and you were able to get away without working. The lazy people are about to be exposed. Wow. Okay? The reckless entrepreneurs are about to get exposed. Okay? Those people who were working, doing their job, being diligent, improving, they're also going to be exposed in a positive way. The business owners that didn't celebrate and get cocky while money was so cheap in the economic expansion, they became arrogant, lazy, sloppy. Those guys are going to get destroyed. But the guys that improved... You know, found ways to get better. They took care of their guys that were in the office on a daily basis. They're going to be exposed in a positive way. The market is open. Things are things are cheap right now. Companies are going to be bought left and right. Opportunities are going to come where talent's going to leave a company because the CEO wasn't at work on a daily basis. He's going to take his talent somewhere else. She's going to take her talent somewhere else. We're getting so many calls because we have so many job openings right now. We're doing interviews right now on a, on a daily basis, okay? Mm -hmm. You're seeing people coming in here. We're on top of each other in this building. We can't even fit people in this building here right now. We have a building issue. We have a space issue right now, which my, is a great issue. My office is willing, my op willing to move here. Yeah. And they're, they're not even from here. They're coming from all over the world to come and be part of the Valuetainment team. My office is the men's bathroom now. You know that, right? So <laughs> anyway, keep going. Is Pat, that what you're doing? No, that's day? my... That's my were you like, yeah. are you pooping again? No, dude, I'm working. No, well, you were pooping yesterday. That's a different that's story. That's a different story. But the point here... But the point here... But the point, we have, uh, but the point here is yeah. the fact that the, the good people are finding each other. It was hard to find each other. Let me replace good. The hardworking drivers who are ambitious couldn't really identify who was who. It was too blurry yeah. two years ago. Today, they're like, oh, so you were full of shit this entire time. Oh, yeah. They're real. I'm going over there. Wow. Mm -hmm. Damn, I am with a real company. Thank God I'm staying put. I'm not right. going anywhere. So that's the thing that's going on today. And by the way, I'll go to you right after this. For election, if you think about election-wise, this is going to hurt because to get reelected, you need to have some kind of success or a war. So you need to have a great economy that no one's bothering. Everybody's like, yeah, dude, if the economy is this good, let, let it roll. Let's go one more time with this guy. Yeah. Or you need to have a war where it's fear, anxiety, and you're like, well, we can't make a disruption because we're doing this. One of those two things. If you no longer have this data to say, look what a great job we've done with unemployment, now what data are you going to be talking about? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll just, just really fast. And Adam, you brought up the point. And Pat, I'm happy you brought it back. All this, so I've been here for next month, is going to be by one year, May. I, I moved here. It's crazy. It's crazy. In May. Wow. All this talk, Adam, happy recession. Anniversary. Thank you. The recession, the, you know, inflate, everything that's happening and all that. I, 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 for someone that doesn't really know, like, like as much as you guys know, I feel like, like this bubble is, is getting to, to a point where it's going to pop. But this administration's like, Saving it so it doesn't pop under this watch. Is that what is that's what happened? Because remember, the White House changed the definition of recession live. What we were we were in here and they're like, no, two quarters. No, that's not. They changed it on Wikipedia. So Adam, do you feel like they're saving it because they know it's gonna pop, but they don't want it to happen under their watch? What? Well, yeah, any politician doesn't want something like that to happen under their watch. Yeah, I, I think what Pat brings up is a good point because there's basically two parts to a company. Yeah, there's the employer the business owner, the entrepreneur, and then there's the employees. Yeah. Okay. The workers. And I don't know what percentage of the company are the entrepreneur, you know, C-suite executives, 5%, 10%, Maybe yeah, 90% of the company are the workers. Well, yeah. sometimes it's one lonely guy who founded yeah. the company. Yeah. Yeah. Up in the, up in the attic. With, with yeah. the, uh, and he's hired all these people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think, you know, Pat's more speaking to the business owners. I'm more speaking to the employees. Um, I'm not 
a CEO. I'm not a business owner, so I, I never kind of step out of place with that. That's really why I respect what Pat and BizDoc do. You know, my message is usually to the employees, to the Vinnies of the world who's like, buddy, you want to start a company, but yeah. I'm just yeah. hire me to do your next. But what do you say party. about this, though? What do you say about what we got that point? What do you say yeah. about this? About what's the question? No, about about what what we just talked about for the last Tom. What do you have thoughts on this? Well, one thing <laughs> Pat mentioned and the diffusion index. Just think of that as the thermometer on jobs, and the diffusion index is the lowest it's been since April of 2020. Rob, can you go back to that chart you just showed? It's the lowest it's been since April 2020. Would you like to see what the market was doing in April of 2020? That was the COVID free fall. Mm -hmm. Remember that, Pat? Look at that. So they're saying that this temperature gauge on jobs is as low as it's been since then. So it's, it's real, folks, and it's coming, and you need to manage yourself accordingly. Yeah, there's, uh, there's not a, this is not a hypothetical. This is coming based on data. And by the way, you know, b based on that, you're hearing different That's generations cool. how they're looking at work, yeah. right? You got Gen Zs are getting sick and tired of their jobs, okay? I'll give uh, uh, this story here, and then, Adam, I'm going to come to you. That sounds like poor um, timing. Yeah. Gallup survey shows that from 2019 to 2022, if you can have this chart to show it, Rob, that'd be great. Their shares of people under 35 who reported being engaged with their jobs dropped from 37% to 33, 4%, not a big a drop, but it's the lowest level since 2011. At the same time, the share who reported being actively disengaged rose from 17, uh, 17 to 12, 5%. That's a real number on 17 to 12. Remote and hybrid work during the pandemic is a significant factor in the growing workplace Disgruntled men of younger generation, young workers aren't getting enough social interactions, mentorship, and guidance from their managers and more experienced colleagues in remote and hybrid work environments. The rise of digital messaging tools like Slack has also made it harder for early career employers to learn by osmosis in an office. I wonder why. Companies can improve the office experience, reorganize the workplace to create more space for people to collaborate and socialize, organize more happy hours, pay for, oh my God, <laughs> pay for parking and subway place uh, fares. By the way, this sounds, can you find out who the writer of this article is? She, he, she sounds pissed off. Who is the writer? It's okay. one of the what, business what, insiders. What Aki is saying Saying, Aki's boss, please. She is asking for a parking pass <laughs> or a subway fare, like a please. you know money there to help her out with. Uh, allow people to arrive later. She wants to come later to work yep. and leave earlier to avoid rush hour com commutes and help facilitate the social interactions and mentorship that young people are otherwise missing. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How do you, Pat, you are a big mentor. Sorry to interrupt. But how the hell do you get mentored by showing up later and leaving earlier? No, but you know what it is, though? This is a crock I of want shit is what this is. Mentorship. Tell a younger person, younger people don't want to work that hard. <laughs> what? Yeah. How the hell you move up in a company? How the hell do you move up in your uh, in your career, Adam? Yeah, I think there's a four-letter word that uh, uh, young people need to understand that is not a bad word, and that word is work. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Not up in here. No, not up in here. <laughs> not up in here. Yeah, I mean, guys, the reality is if you're 20 years old, you're going to be working, that four-letter word again, work, for the next 50 years. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> For the next Get, 50 years. Kill so yourself there's, now. You can't microwave <laughs> success. Yeah. Okay? It's a slow burn, mother suckers. <laughs> there's no like, oh, let me just show up to the office at 10 o'clock, leave by 4, check out, get the parking pass. It's With my dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's not how it works. Yeah, exactly. Okay? Maybe they need like an, an, an inspirational speaker or somebody that they can look up to. Since the transgender thing Anthony is becoming Robbins a big or? hit, maybe there was a famous poet Okay, from the transgender community, and he said, "You better work. <laughs> you better work. You better work. <laughs> work work you at Gen Z's. <laughs> or baby, shout out wait, to great RuPaul. RuPaul. Or or your, RuPaul. <laughs> yeah, even RuPaul knew that you. RuPaul better knew. Work. You better work. You better work. Coming from RuPaul, we're trying to be understanding. I mean, listen, guys, Gen you will Z. end up the size of PBD and the biz doc. Listen to RuPaul at work. You will end up living in a van <laughs> down, down by the river. river. Yeah, wow. I think that Gen Z needs to realize that work and yeah. work ethic is not a bad thing. Yeah, it's what's going to help you survive yep. for the next seventy years of your freaking life. Yeah, and if you're not used to getting used to it now, buddy, whether this recession happens or not. 
it's coming at some point. And so, and- so here's what's crazy about what you're saying right now, Adam. It's the next story, which is funny about this. So let me, let me without ruining the story, let me just read it. <laughs> so one story, Insider, this tells you who's writing for Insider and who's writing for Wall Street Journal. So the Insider story is about don't work people so hard. Here's a Wall Street Journal story. Let's go. Bosses want hard workers, so they're hiring older people. <laughs> And by the way, older people who have been through recessions, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and they know they're like, you know, this could get really bad because yeah. I'm old and I've been through That's it. Right. So you know what? You better put your head down and work or you're going to get your yeah. ass shot off. Older, work, o- older workers are increasingly in demand at businesses as they're more likely to have a strong work ethic, show up on time, and value stability. Companies such as Kinder Care, Learning Centers, and Manpower Group have signed AARP pledge to give workers over 50 a shot at hiring. People 55 and older are the fastest growing segment of the workforce, and the Trend is driven by demographic shifts, longer lifespans, and a weak stock market. A Wall Street Journal uh, NORC uh, survey of America's values found that three-quarters of people 65 and older said hard work is very important to them personally compared to 61%, 18 to 29. Ageism remains a barrier for some older workers, but age discrimination complaints to Equal Employment Opportunity Commission dropped, ready, 45%. From 2011 to 2021. Hey, normally the older workers were afraid of being replaced by the 23-year-old. Hey, 23-year-old, you know what this article says to you? They're no longer scared of you because you're lazy. Yep. You don't work hard. How much does that suck? FYI, just so you know this, as a kid growing up, if I, you know how people say, well, my dad always did this, and my mom always called me, my mom called me a moron, my dad called me this. You know what my dad called me when I was a kid? You're lazy. Yep. Mm-hmm. He said it thousands of times when I was 14, 15, 16. I was so sick of it. And then I said, maybe this man is right. I'm and lazy. I went in the army. I said, you know what? No. Mm-hmm. I'm going to work my ass off. Then in a marketplace, sits there and says, you want to work? We're going to reward you. We're going to reward you. Tom, what do you have to say about a story? Not that you, re- you, you relate to the older people, but yeah. what do you have to say about a story like this? Um, <laughs> we're seeing it. And we're seeing it. And uh, Pat and I are involved on a, c- a couple companies. And, um, and one's in the music industry, one's in the insurance industry, and one's in media. So this is pretty diverse group. And we are seeing people that were sick and tired of maybe the politics and the wokeism and a lot of things of large jo- organizations looking forward to coming back to a mid-sized company and bringing all their experience and skills. We are seeing interviews. These interviews have been unbelievable, Pat, right? We say, well, why do you want to do this and do this? Because you guys inspire me. I love the youth that's here. I love the diversity that's here. And so for many of them, they don't want to be. They don't want to be in that old environment. And they're here saying, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to bring my experience. And I'd love to be part of this because it kind of inspires me again. So 23 year olds, you better be careful because that's not that those aren't, you know, practiced interview questions. That is the passion mm -hmm. of their heart and they're willing to come and they're coming for your job. I'll say one thing. No, he, I'm gonna come. come. <laughs> don't. I'll say don't. one thing about these work, these older guys. Once they can figure out how to turn their computer on, yeah, it's over. They kill the game. <laughs> but if you're giving them a computer and say, "Hey, get to work," they're like, I got no clue about it's this. So funny. Laptop, yeah. Twitter, Rob, social I'm gonna send media. You yeah. Open window. But, yeah. The window is open. Yeah, the window. I, I don't Try know. Try the soup. What's wrong with okay. the soup? I don't agree. But I don't know if I agree with on, that. By well, the way, it, it, like we learned yesterday. Rudy doesn't know what a meme is. <laughs> no, he does he not. He knows what a dick he does. is. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah. by the way, uh, some people are some people say this argument when you say something like this. They say, you know, you're not being sympathetic to the younger generation. Okay, okay, <laughs> no problem. Or they'll say, Pat, the richer are the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poor. Okay, and that's not cool. You know, the wages are low. They're not paying as well as they did before. No problem. Let's. I have a data to help you with your argument. Okay. okay? So I'm very comfortable showing data that is against my argument, but I'm going to make my argument towards this. If you can look at this data right here, check this out. From 1979, 1980 till today, give or take, okay? What this chart shows is the red, you notice at the top, is the top one percentile, okay, of earners in America. Income gains at the top dwarf those at the low and middle income households. They're right. The next is the blue, 19%. It's growing, but not crazy. 
Then it's the next 60% that's actually beating the 19%. Then you got the bottom 20%, okay? Now, it's easy for somebody to say what? They're going to say, well, th this is exactly the complaint, Pat. It's, it's exactly what happens. This is why the rich keep getting rich and the poor keep getting poor. Yes. And by the way, that separation is going to happen and going to get wider and wider. I'm going to give my argument. You, the audience, give yours. Adam, Tom, Vinny, you give yours. Okay. And, you know, let's learn from each other. Here's my ideas. couple things. One, I remember, you know, uh, I'm in the Army. Me and this other guy, he says to me, we're sitting in a room, and, and the sergeant says to us, guys, start setting aside $200 a month of your money into a Roth IRA. And I'm like, this guy's full of shit. <laughs> you want me to put $200 a month into a Roth IRA? You're out of your freaking mind. Okay, so I leave. My buddy, we go out two weeks later to, to the club, and I'm buying drinks. I'm having fun. I'm like, dude, how come you're not drinking? He says, dude, I can't, I can't afford it. I said, dude, what do you mean? We make the same amount of money. We live in the same place. We, we have the same exact car payment. He says, yeah, the difference is I'm setting aside $200 a month in a Roth IRA. I said, what a freaking boring guy yeah. you are, you freaking idiot. Yeah. You know, and I'm making fun of him, right? Anyways, two and a half years later, I'm getting out of the army, okay? I'm ETSing. Yeah. And <laughs> we're sitting there talking. This guy shows me an account, says, Pat, look at this. It's got like six or $7,000 in it. He's got six or 7000 which some people say, that's not a lot of money, Pat. What are you talking For about? back then, yeah. It was. Dude, trust me. That was a lot of money because I got out of the army with nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and I sat there and I'm like, damn. So watch this. Just two and a half years ago, we had the same exact net worth. So every month, his net worth was going higher than mine by 200 bucks. 200 Plus bucks. interest on the other six. Plus interest on the other six. So eventually, the separation between him and I got what? Wider mm -hmm. and wider and wider and wider naturally. That moment when I got out of the army broke, I understood the concept of this freaking guy set aside 200 bucks. This lazy guy that wanted to party nonstop with his money, drinking. he wasn't a long-term thinking. I was drinking, partying. That's what I was doing. <laughs> but I learned very quickly. Once I got out and I started working at Bally's, I started setting aside my money. One day, a year after, uh, nine months after being at Bally's, my boss and I are sitting there, with the three of us, we're at Denny's. And they had been at Bally's for nine years. I'd been at Bally's for nine months. They said, hey, man, you know, I'm trying to figure this out. I said, how much cash you got? He's like, dude, I got no cash. I'm paycheck to paycheck. I said, dude, you make more money than I do. How much cash you got? Dude, I got no cash. I'm paycheck to paycheck. I'm like, how much cash you got, PBD? I'm like, dude, I got $10,500. You got $10,000? you have only been with us for nine months. I know, bro, but I'm saving everything I'm making. Mm -hmm. Seriously, yes. Bingo. So this chart shows if you keep saving and investing and others don't, you don't separate incrementally in a way that you think. You separate exponentially. And by the way, the separation's going to get wider and wider and wider and wider. No matter how much you bash rich people, they're going to go wider because while you were kicking at wanting to work three, four days a week, they're doing six days a week because the Bible says take one day off. And a lot of people follow that guideline of just taking one day off. But everybody wants a four-day work week. Don't be upset at the guy that's whooping your ass because he's working six days a week for 10 years and you work four days. Let's actually do the math. Boom. A guy works six days a week and only takes Sundays off, which is what I did. And it's till today. That's my philosophy, right? So a guy works six days. And he takes one day off over a year span. What is it over a year? Over a year, you get 52 additional days a year, mm -hmm. okay? Which is how many hours? Roughly 416 hours. Because I'm doing 58 times 8. I think that's 416 hours, right? So if that's 52 additional days you get per year. Do you realize within six years, within seven years, you got one additional year? Wow. Within 10 years... You got years. Within 10 years, <laughs> you got 520 additional days. You got 4,000 additional hours. Yeah, brother, we're not in the same league, homie. Sorry. We're not going to be competing in the same league. But let me give you the other part about this that's a problem. The other problem about this that's a problem. Who else is influencing this? Who else is influencing this? This can also only happen with the help of the government. The more money you print, the more money you put into the economy, 
you're thinking you're helping the low and middle income. You don't think the people at the top know who do Like every time when they say, Jamie Dimon, they're going to put $2 trillion more dollars into the economy. Jamie's like, hell yeah, because 40% of it's coming to Chase. Yeah. $800 billion is going to end up at whatever the number is mm-hmm. going to be. In his mind, is like, that's great. Put $2 trillion. I'm going to get more on my balance right. sheet. You're just going to print it and we'll end up Do with- you really think these politicians that are sending money out to do this, you think they're sitting there saying, let's help the low and middle income? No. The money's going straight up to the top. We're going to show you a clip here in a minute. I'm going to get your feedback. But we're going to show you a clip here in a minute on what happened with Nancy Pelosi. You going to be seeing what people are saying to him. How the hell did you get so rich? Because you got insider stuff and other people are going to jail having done one-tenth of the crime you and your husband have committed. You're seeing the protesting taking place. But the low wage, the separation, the disparity, all of that is you need to start thinking long-term and not joining the camp that's convincing you to work fewer hours is you need to figure out a way to be more competitive in a marketplace. When I talk to comedian Kevin Hart, he says, you'd be surprised how hard I had to work. I worked my ass off, okay? You talk to Rogan. Rogan, how hard that freaking guy works. People think Joe became Joe because Joe is just this talented, funny, likable guy, and he is all of that. But I know a lot of talented, funny, likable guys that don't work hard. This guy was diligent, focused, doing what he's doing, and then all of a sudden gets a few hundred million dollars talking about, I got a few money. That's what he said. That doesn't happen by luck. You think he didn't work his ass off doing the UFC show here, traveling here, over there, over this? You think that schedule is four days a week? The people you admire, younger Gen Z generation, the people you admire, that you read about, that you watch on the sports, that you watch in movies, that you watch in you know, politics or military, you read about the heroes, were not four-day-a-week people. They did not follow that. The heroes you admire didn't follow that strategy. That is purely a propaganda being sold by a bunch of people that went to universities that some professor told them to work four days a week. And they're coming out being you know, disciples of these prophets saying four days a week, not realizing they just ruined somebody's dreams by saying to work four days a week. That's my argument. You don't have to agree with it. You can bash it, trash it. I'm a big boy. I'm comfortable with it. Tom. So everybody understands football. What if I told you? Hey, you know what? You can play football against me, and I'll tell you what. I get four downs. You get five downs. That's 25%. That's an extra. Would you play that game? Yeah, because even if I'm better than you as a team, what an analogy. you get another chance. What an analogy. And you keep coming. You would say, sure, I'll play that game. All day long, I'll play that game. And people, I don't think, really Sick understand point. that. So The second thing is, you know, set aside politics and write on a piece of paper— And don't talk to your friends and don't look at the internet. Write these words on a piece of paper. Why does that candidate want my vote? Why? And then the next one is, how are they scaring me? I heard a great talk that boiled down to those two things, the things coming from the top, PBD. Why does that candidate want my vote? And how are they trying to scare me? Not with your friends, not to get in an argument over the, the issues that are in there. Just ask yourself that question. How are they trying to scare me and why do they want my vote? And you step back and all of a sudden you realize the way they do it is you have to become dependent on them. That is the easiest way to keep your vote forever is to get you addicted to the crack that is whatever program they can offer you. If you give me one more down, I'm going to play that game. And even if you're a better team than me, I'm going to beat you. And I am resolved to never be dependent on anybody else. And if you allow yourself to be dependent and you allow yourself to be bought, that's where you're going to end up. But that's what I have to say about that. I love that analogy. And I'm going to try to give an NBA analogy to your NFL analogy. Here we go. Here it is. The sports audience. Like if I get seven fouls? Yeah. (laughs) No, I think, well, to use the top 1%, the next 20, and then basically the bottom, you know, in the the NBA, there's 20 guys that make 40 million bucks a year. You got LeBron, you got KD, you got Steph, you got Giannis. These are the all-stars, okay? And then you've got the average NBA guy that makes, I don't know, 5, 10 million bucks a year. Not bad for a day's work. Mid-level exemption. Exactly. And then you got what is known as the veteran's minimum. Keyword minimum. And then you got guys like Udonis Haslam that literally don't play a minute. Okay? And it's the equivalent of Udonis. And respect to UD if you ever see this because he's been in the league for 20 years. He's freaking my age. 42, still playing. 
but he doesn't play. And it's the equivalent of him saying, hey, I'm on the same team of Jimmy, as Jimmy Butler. I played with LeBron. I want to make what he makes. Yeah. Well, listen, motherfucker, <laughs> you ain't LeBron. Yeah. <laughs> You're sitting on the bench mm -hmm. expecting to make what the 1% make. So here's the message to like the, the Bernie Sanders and the AOCs out there. They're always trying to drive up the minimum wage, the equivalent of the veteran's minimum. And I think our message is, Rather than trying to fight for 12 or fight for 15 or next, then it'll be the fight for 20. It's like, why don't you, the bottom worker, improve your skill set? So, because in the average NBA career, it lasts five years, okay? The average worker is going to work 50 years. If you're always fighting for a higher minimum wage, what is your ceiling? It's just the minimum, whatever they're willing to shell out and give you. But if you actually put in the work and improve and become the LeBron or Steph of your field, the sky's the limit. So, by the way, some people's argument to that would be, well, dude, I, I can't be 6'8", jump 45 inches, and run a, you know, 4'440". Can't be LeBron. But you right? can in but the you, real world. But No, but wait a minute. But you can be Steph Curry. That's yes. the point. Oh, yeah. You can be Steph Curry. Mm -hmm. okay? So to me, I fully agree. Yeah. And, and by the way, some people are going to say, you know, well, Pat, Dude, I, I'm not I'm not as smart as Elon Musk. You're right. You'll never be Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. Totally get it. Okay, we can we can 99.99% of the world is never going to be Elon Musk. Okay, the percentage of being Elon Musk is a very very small percentage. But this isn't about you being Elon Musk. But you can be, you know, a Jack Richardson working at a place that started at the bottom and now is an executive C-suite running media, running finance, yeah. running something, chief of staff, making 200, making 220, and then boom, five years later, you got shares in a company. Ten years later, the company is sold. It goes public. You make $3.9 million on those shares. Like, how did I become a millionaire? I never thought I was going to be. Mm -hmm. You can be that. I think anybody can be that. Forget yes. about the billionaire. Forget about the Hector guys. Forget about the Decker guys. Dude, you can pull that off. I lived in a community. The first time I started making money and all of a sudden I'm living in a community, all I want to know about is, hey, how'd you make your money? How'd you do it? How'd you do it? How did you do it? How did you do it? Okay, small percentage, uh, you know, uh, my family, you know, I, I work really hard. And you find out from the other guy, no, that guy got his money from his family. Okay, cool. That was only 10% of people. But you know how many people worked at a company and then all of a sudden the company went public? Hey, I worked at the company. I was there at the beginning. 18 years later, they went public. We sold. Dude, I got $1.9 million. I couldn't even believe I'm a regular guy. I'm like, really? Wow. What did you do there? Dude, I wasn't even a director or a VP. I was just a manager, and I stayed there. One day, they gave options. I'm like, why would I go anywhere else? Boom, anywhere else. I mean, those are the stories that are there. Those are the, they, they say the day Microsoft went public, uh, the number is 5,000 millionaires. My, can you look up Microsoft public? 5,000 millionaire stocks. Can you type that out? Some story. It's either Microsoft or Apple. No, it was Microsoft. He's going to find it. And it was 32-year-old receptionist. A seven Regular year, guys. A seven-year engineer that had been working 60 hours a week and busted his butt and was given some of those stock options. If you got to put Microsoft, not $5,000. How many millionaires did Microsoft create? Yeah, so so the, the, point, the point here is, both of you guys made great analogies. The point here is, for, for those that are defending the four-day work week and remote and all of that shit, let me tell you what you're defending. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. It was 12,000 employees, okay? <laughs> right. Okay. The, it rose to dominate the personal computer operating system market with MS-DOS in the mid-'80s, wow. followed by Windows. The company's 1986 initial public offering and subsequent rise in its shares created three billionaires and an estimated 12,000 millionaires from regular employees. Jeez. These are not crazy employees. The people I was describing. Yeah, these are the people that said, dude, I, I'm going to stay here. It's hard. i got to work my ass off. We're part of a startup. Mm -hmm. But you know what? These guys seem serious. These guys seem committed. Maybe something can happen. So you, if you're watching, like, so then, then the opposite side is going to say, but I'm not part of something like that but then keep open your damn eyes yeah. and find some they're out there you can find them and then bring value to them and say i'm gonna do whatever i can to bring value to this organization and if they don't reward you trust me you're gonna find somebody that's gonna reward you when a good guy or a good girl goes through a streak of one or two bad relationships but you know this person's a good person i'm like let me just tell you you're gonna be fine okay you're gonna be fine just tell the world what you're looking for, and the right person in the right climate, you're eventually going to find them. Okay? There you, go. Yeah. you have to know more people need to know what you're looking for. They'll eventually You, you took the words out of my mouth, Pat, because I was, when I was saying, like, you have to find places that have the culture 
like a value tainment. You know what I mean? Like you have to come and look for it. Me and uh, Maverick were shooting a sketch in the other building months ago. I told you about this. Shamari, who works with us right now, walked in with a suit looking for, he's like, I want to work at this type of company. And you know what? I think it is too bad. It's like people got addicted to being lazy. Especially COVID didn't help. People were like, you know what? This is, this is fun. I don't have to do anything. I stay at my house. And a habit, Pat, a normal habit creates itself in four days. If you do something for four days, you keep drinking, you keep drinking, you keep, it's, it's going to keep going. You know what I mean? So you got to break break that habit. You're We're in lazy it. and reliant. And reliant, yeah. And then like Mario, hit, like last week, Pat, for my show, for the Vincent O'Shaughnessy show, Mario's like, yeah, we're gonna, we all agreed we're coming in Saturday. And I'm normally, you know, comedians and that, we're Monday through Friday. But if I felt like, holy shit, in here on a Saturday and it pays off when you see the product of what you're doing on that extra day. You know what I mean? You, 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 know, you know what I do on Saturdays? I'll bring the kids to the office. And it becomes an opportunity for me to spend some time with them and then I'll explain to them why I'm in the office. Mm -hmm. And say, hey, daddy, why do we have to go to the office? I'll say, because if you want to have an edge over your competitors, you got to do things they don't want to do. And they're like, okay, that makes sense. So then I'll see Dylan stays practice after practice. Two hour practice is over with. He's still for another hour. Dylan, can I ask you why you're staying for another hour? Daddy, if you want to have an edge over your competitors, <laughs> you got to stop. Like, bingo. Got him. Bingo. Got it. There you go. FYI, thanks to Facebook and Instagram. We got Dylan's Instagram account back. Uh, Dylan lost his Instagram account because when I was posting age, I put his real age. They said, bam, <laughs> this Bye. account's taken oh, really? down. But they helped out, which was kind of good to get his account back. Dylan's a stud. But anyways, these are principles that we're talking about. Next, Walmart yeah. says 65%. Of stores will be serviced by automation within three years. By the way, this is a real concern. This is actually something that ought to be a concern. Walmart plans to automate 65% of its stores within the next three years in order to speed up its uh, e-commerce fulfillment center. The move follows the announcement of laying off 2,000 employees who fulfill online orders. Walmart aims to move around 55% of packages that it processes through its fulfillment uh, centers through automated facilities by January 2026, which is expected to improve unit cost averages by about 20%. The company's investment in automation technology is part of its uh, uh, more than $15 billion capital spending budget. This, year, this, this increased efficiency will support better inventory management and Walmart's rapidly growing e-commerce business. Walmart hiked its minimum wage earlier this year across the country, surpassing $1,750, which were expected to be reflected in March second paychecks tom there's a cause and effect here ladies and gentlemen and so you got bernie sanders out there trying to raise the minimum wage wage the minimum wage so how did walmart respond first of all they said for the people that are working well in our stores that that are doing well we're going to move you up to 1750 there was also a thing about walmart was actually paying uh some education reimbursements when those people wanted to go and take some courses but then on the other side of it the other side of the board meeting went like this look uh, the stock market is an angry beast, and we got to feed it. And we have to feed it profits in a thing called the P.E. ratio. How much we got? Um, we got $30 billion in cash. What if we take $15 billion of it and we invest in automation so we can keep the best people at 17 bucks an hour, but we can compete with Amazon that's automating and doing Amazon Prime, and you can click on there, and you can get a tube of toothpaste in an hour to your front door. I don't need Instacart. Amazon Prime, have you noticed that? Some things they'll deliver like in two hours. If you order it now, it'll be at your front door in two hours. Yeah. And there it is. And so they're competing. So there's three angles here. The first angle is beware of capitalists. If you put them in the corner, they're going to invent their way out. Rule one, never screw with real capitalists and entrepreneurs. Rule two, you know what? If you're going to force me to pay people more, I only want the best people. Yep. And so you better be the best. Otherwise, you're not going to be here. And rule three, competition brings out an assortment of things that ultimately are going to be good to consumers because you know what's going to happen here? On one side, you could look at labor and say, oh my gosh, my gosh, my gosh. On the other side, you know what I see? Mm. I see Walmart competing with Amazon so that people get efficient, low-cost consumer staples at a time when inflation is up. So I look at the other side and say, hey, there's going to be an Amazon and a Walmart competing so that people on average middle American incomes can afford <laughs> to get things in a face of inflation. And I think that's important. But that's what I see here. I see about three things moving around. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing that we learned in the last literally year, maybe two years, when we had Andrew Yang sitting right here where Vinny's sitting right there, 
And this is after $5 trillion was printed of STEMI money. And he was the biggest proponent of universal basic income, UBI. That was his whole message uh, when he ran for uh, the presidency in 2016. And um, was that, or was that 2020? Whenever he was running yeah. president. Okay, I think it was 16. Um, no, 20. And Pat said, well, make the case for UBI now, Mr. Yang. He's like, we just gave out everybody money. How are we doing? And, and you know, he kind of eloquently skirted, well, you know, UBI, it's just like, it doesn't hold water. Yeah. Like, this shit don't work. Yeah. Just printing of the money and giving people money to sit around and do nothing doesn't work. So uh, I guess the point is companies are going to have to figure it out. Employees are going to have to figure it out. The, the days of maybe UBI is a thing, maybe just giving stimmy checks is a thing, I think we've proven during COVID this is not going to be beneficial for the economy. No, I, 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 I have no idea what you guys are talking about. So, um, He's like, I'll just uh, take my I, 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 I just, No, You know what I said? In my head, I'm like, is Walmart bad now? Or like, I'm like, are there robots there? When I read automation, I go, so wait, are AIs taking over our jobs? Because I said it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, that was good commentary here. By the way, let, let's Bro. go. Let's go to. Uh, let's go to our friends. Uh, let's do a quick politics story, man. We can't let this go without giving Nancy Pelosi a shout out. So, Pelosi event turns chaotic. Yes, I love it. When anti-war protesters say she belongs in depths of hell, war criminal. When you start hearing people calling Democrats war criminals. I mean, were they not the anti-war party? Now it's like they are the pro-war party. It's confusing a lot of different people. Let me read this article to you. Um, Which page is on? Page uh, 400? Page oh, okay. Page <laughs> <laughs> That's an inside joke for... All right, so uh, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was heckled by anti-war protesters during the City University of New York even with hecklers calling her war criminals, saddled, drunk. Oh, one protester shouted, <laughs> you know, Pelosi, that's a very good place for you in the depths of hell because so, for some reason you have a very bad obsession of getting us into war. And why is it that you did not admit that there were no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq? One protester yelled, you lied to us. You lied us into a war in Iraq. You got us into invasion of Afghanistan. Now over 90% of those people are impoverished and dying. Why don't you tell the truth about Nord Stream? Why did we destroy Nord Stream? Can you play the clip, by the way? It's somewhere it's out amazing. there if you have it. It's amazing. Watch this. See, that's a very good place for you in the depths of hell. Because for some reason, you have a very bad obsession of getting us into She's not lying. Why did we destroy Nord Stream? Vinny, what do you think about that? I just, just, but, 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 uh, I'm, I'm proud of somebody. Like, and then watch, one more person's coming. One more person, Pat, that is brave. I respect these people. Watch. You are a war criminal. There he is. Hey, Congresswoman. What? Here we go. One. I came to see a warmonger, but you're a sad old drunk. <laughs> you're a what? You're a and sad you're old drunk. Are you looking for Ukraine? Yes. Did we blow up the Nord Stream on accident look. or on purpose? Did you and know look. about that? Aren't you supposed to be part of the indictment tomorrow? Yes. You're a war criminal by definition, Miss Pelosi. You got some nerve. Is that why you're here in Manhattan? Wow. Is that why you're here? Because you're getting indicted tomorrow, you goddamn war criminal? <laughs> How many people have died in your wow. family? Wow. Wow. Mind you, mind guys, you, guys, guys, mind very, you. very precise. Mind you, uh, oh, Rob, Hillary's on stage, too. You notice how nobody said Hillary's on stage. Hillary was questioning her, wasn't she? That's Hillary Clinton. Uh, no. Is it? Because no, they didn't want to get suicide. No. No. That was like, Paul Krugman. No, I, 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 the, well, the, the thumbnail had uh, Hillary on the left. I was like, is, is there a difference? <laughs> Yeah, no, on the left. No, who's on the left? Paul, there, uh, it's Paul Krugman that no, you no, identified. No, no, he's saying who's Hillary. to the left I know, I, of I, Pelosi. I thought, my bad, I thought Hillary was up there as well. I well, didn't know it was just them two. But anyway, Pat, I, I love, as a veteran too, I love when there's moments like this where people, yeah, there's nobody else. Uh, the thumbnail had it. It's just, we need more people like this 
oh, standing up. Because mind you, you, you see this audience. This, oh, look, look at look at the, these these libtards. He's standing up, yelling, and they they won't even let you say your piece because it's true. It's true. All the wars, all the all the Iraq. And mind you, I'm going back to Bush for all these. Anybody that got us into these wars, uh, the accountability, zero accountability. How is Bush, Bush, Rumsfeld, I mean Cheney, uh, none of them got in trouble. None of them got their, their foot held to the fire. We went to war because there was weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. We didn't find them. So what they do, Pat? They changed the name of the war to, what was it? Iraqi uh, Enduring Freedom or something, and nobody ever pays the price. Oh, yeah, yet. Operation Enduring Freedom. And, yeah, because you just changed the name because we're already there and we couldn't find anything because they knew it wasn't It's there. branding. We'll make it sound better. Yeah, no, of course. But then now, and then now you have a, a, an ex-president who, who hooked up with a, a porn star, if that's what you want to call her, and that 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 person gets arrested and and goes to jail. Like, Wait, I, are you I, talking about me? You're talking about Trump. no. I'm talking I'm about not, Trump, bro. Oh, okay, I'm not Never talking mind. about Joe. But it's just it's just I don't, those type of moments make me happy that people have the the balls to stand up and yell at them, which it ain't gonna do anything. But I'm I'm a I'm a little confused. Okay, okay, I'm just a little confused by this because we can make a list of all the wrongdoings that Nancy Pelosi has done. Okay, yeah. granted, I'm not here to defend Nancy Pelosi at all. But on my list of things that I would be upset with Nancy Pelosi about, the Iraq war is not on the top of the list because we, this is after what, 2003, Afghanistan was 01, 02, and then we went into Iraq in 03. Okay, Rob, fact check the fuck out of me right now. <laughs> I'm sure that I don't think Nancy Pelosi became Speaker of the House until 2007, 2008, right before Obama became elected. Fact check. But she was in politics. Please. But I'm yes. sure she was pro But war. she's not the person. She's not the tip of the spear. What year, Rob? Uh, 2007. Okay. All right. So five years after all this went down, now you're going to come after her again. I'm not defending Pelosi. Yeah. These people are angry. They're upset. They want accountability. God bless them, and they deserve it. Mm. But I just, I don't, it's not adding up to me, the war criminal thing. Corrupt, ridiculous, absurd, crazy, nervous Nancy. Drunk. All, drunk, drunk, all totally acceptable. Yeah. Warmonger? Okay, by the way, I don't even know about the Nord, nobody's proven what's Nord happened Trump with Nord Stream 2, whether it was Russians, Ukrainians, Americans. Or us. We don't know. Or us. Again, I'm not defending Nancy here. I, I, I empathize with these people. They're upset about a whole host of shit that's going on in San Francisco, California. I'd be out there getting crazy, too. Yeah. I just don't know if this specific um, meltdown is actually that warranted. I think it shows that there's some underlying tensions about her. I think that's the long and short of it. Because I agree with you. It's like, wait a minute, what are you actually talking about? And you could pick apart the actual things they're saying. But I think what it says underneath there is that there's a lot more dissatisfaction with Nancy Pelosi than the media and her and her careful branding spin. But I agree with you. What are you talking about? Factually, we can break this down. Say, number one, you're rude. Number one, it's disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Other citizens are coming here to hear something. Um, and... This and so we should actually feel sorry for the Pelosi's because yeah. getting hammered is is uh, uh, it's just a problem for that. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, Paul gets hammered. Well, different kind of hammering, but and then Nancy's getting it's hammered. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so the poor Pelosi's they're just dealing with the hammer this year. Yeah. So why don't we just and, leave them alone? And Vinny brings up a good point. If I mean, listen, if there's anybody that this, if you're angry about this, where this direction, this heat should be headed, it's the Bush 100%. White House, oh. George W. Bush. Dick Cheney, Donald well, Rumsfeld, the list goes on. Yeah. And believe me, those guys have heard it for years. Uh, we had uh, Ari Fleischer here. Yeah. Ari Fleischer was the uh, press secretary for Bush, Bush. during 9 yeah. 11, Afghanistan, Iraq. Everything. And he even said, listen, this is something that I have to wear for the rest of my life. Yeah. When we said they have weapons of mass destruction, and he had to take that L. And I think Ari Fleischer is a capable, informed, smart dude. And I even asked him about that on the podcast. Pat, you remember? He's like, yeah, I got I have no response. We yeah, fucked up. Yeah, but Adam, but I, that cost America trillions of dollars. They but they accidentally got involved in the Halliburton Strategic Revenue Plan. I, I mean, yeah, the, uh, yeah, the Iraq War. The but, military but, but, but Adam, industrial but, complex. But Adam, here's my thing. I Stimulus checks. But Adam, I'm not happy with just <laughs> yeah. taking an L. You need to take his ass to jail because they, like, hold on. We're not talking about 
Who, uh, who should go to jail? Uh, everybody that signed on and said, we are going to Iraq because they have this, and we killed over a million, million women, children. So we yeah. ruined that going there from Iraq to Afghanistan. to Everything started because of that, from 9-11 to that. And no, who, who has gone to jail for killing all those people? Because that's like saying, all right, guys, we're going to go and shoot up Tom's house because Tom stole this from us. And we go there, we shoot up Tom, we shoot the whole thing, and then we're like, oh, shit, mm -hmm. Tom didn't steal it. Now what? We just get to yeah. take an L or just walk away? I, Fuck that. I think you bring up a good point because I think whether it's what you're saying right now, whether that's, that's those angry protesters, whether it's going on what's happening in the banking system right now, people want accountability. 100%. And the problem is the people at the top very rarely are held accountable, whether it's Bush, whether it's freaking Fauci, mm -hmm. whoever it is. And I think a lot of the anger, especially yeah. from the right, is like, okay, so nobody's held accountable but Donald Trump pays a fucking porn star some hush money, and now he's held accountable. This is bullshit, and I understand people's frustration because of it. Yeah, what's what's you know the the, the saw a clip the other day. A guy says, <clears throat> "Okay, so Tate goes to jail, gets arrested when everything is allegedly mm -hmm. there's not no charge or nothing yet, right? Trump goes and is being indicted, and." They 34 different counts. And it's like, oh, well, we have something bigger, but we have something bigger. Okay, you made this guy fly out because you wanted that image mm -hmm. and you allowed photographers to get in there, even though they're not. It's supposed to be a drawing. That's how it typically is done, but you allowed photographers to get in there. And then he goes into all these other people and he says, but how many people got arrested for going to the Epstein Islands? None. <laughs> Zero. How's that possible? Yeah. Why are we not investigating that list? Yep. Who's being protected? Who's not? That alone, sh this, the, that, you know what I like about uh, Bill Maher? Bill Maher is not a Democrat who defends Democrats. Bill Maher is a liberal who is now going against the establishment. He's not going against Republicans or Dems. He just can't stand the establishment is who he's pushing back on, right? Well, the establishment is hiding what happened to Epstein. Well, what happened there? You have access to it. You have the information. Can we find out? Can we find out what happened there? Or is that the crew that is all oh, protecting each other? 100% you know, protecting each other. That's the part where you start kind of wondering, there has to be something that's being hidden. I don't know who I asked when I said, do you think that'll ever come out? He says, it'll never come out. Who was sitting here that said it'll never come out? Oh, yeah. Who oh, was it? Oh, Charlie Kirk. No, yeah. we did it at the, he at says, the it'll never, never come out. Never. But, but I think in about 30 years, they're going to do a movie when you and I are in our 70s. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to movies and we're going to sit there and we're going to say, that's <clears> crazy. We lived through that mm -hmm. and nothing happened. It took 30 years for us to see what happened there. Somebody will make the movie. 100%. Now, like a, like hopefully a somebody's got the kahunas to make that kahunas to make that movie sooner yeah. rather than 30 years from now because a lot of these people that are part of that are about to die in the next 10 or 15 yeah. years but but pat the thing about the secrecy not to cut you off time think about like the like for, for the jfk thing we all we're not stupid we all know what happened the cia just recently said that they all had you know they had a hand in it that that big lie what do you mean dude that 100 percent Something like that JFK assassination, look how long they've held the secret. Like, nobody's really come forward and like, yeah, I, I know. You stay quiet. That Epstein Island, bro, they are just, they know, listen, keep your mouth shut or something's going to happen to you. That's it. They're hey, good. And then, actually, if you go in Dallas down to, this, uh, to the book depository and you can go up there to the sixth floor and you can take a tour. And there is this one area that talks about, you know, uh, conspiracies. And all it says is that there have been many, many conspiracy theories theories over the years and the only th thing that they do there is they let you put on headphones and you can listen and they tell you with 98 percent certainty you are going to hear not an echo but four shots mm -hmm. and the thing was oswald fired three or the book and so after this many years there's a little glimpse of truth they sure. say now we don't know who did it or where it came from but we can conclusively say from these police radios there were four shots. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting. Now, you're right. Enough years go by and the truth is going to come out because you can go down there and there's no longer that whole exhibit down there is not Oswald acted alone. He shot, fired three times, hit Connolly, hit Kennedy in the neck, then 
Kennedy in the head, and that's that. Thank magic, you very much. Magic bullet. Like, thank you. Thank you very much. Q. Lyndon Johnson. Yeah, exactly. Right? That, no, no. Yeah. They, You can go down and listen to it, and they'll say there were four shots fired. And you say, by who? Well, we don't know. And there's a lot of theories as to who fired it, but there were four shots. You know, if only four. But here we are 50 years later, suddenly that is a – that is – that exhibit is operated by the government as a historical location. And you pay $6 and go up and take a tour. So, so long enough, that all comes out. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty – by the way, did you guys see what happened with Riley Gaines this last weekend? Yeah. Uh, just yesterday or two days ago? Uh, can you go to the Riley Gaines story? Uh, a trans activist. Uh, 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 do you have it or no? Okay, she was hit multiple times by a guy in a dress, terrified Riley Gaines is ambushed by screaming trans activists who physically attacked her after swimming champion delivered speech on saving women's sports at San Francisco State University, which, by the way, they have a great baseball program there. So let me say, a terrified against were forced to bar barricade herself into a room at San Francisco State University campus after last night a group of activists ambushed her. Gaines' uh, uh, husband, Louis uh, Barker, said he had brief conversations with his wife while she was locked in the room for nearly three hours. She told me she was hit multiple times by a guy in a dress. I was shaking. It made me that mad. It makes me sick to feel so helpless about it. Do you have a video on this or no? Is there a video to see what happened or no? Is that the video? Can you play it? <clears throat> Dude, look at how angry they're getting, huh? Wow. And mind you, Pat, you know that the White House, Corrine uh, uh, Jean-Pierre on Thursday was like, she praised fierce kids who are transgender for your ability to, to fight back. They're telling them like, "Hey, fight back!" Mind you, that 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 shooter, that trans shooter, and she didn't and say that. I swear to God, she did. On Thursday, she said it. She said fierce. she said the word "fierce." Kids. She said "fierce kids who are transgender for the ability to fight back." And Pat, not only tone deaf. When the Nashville shooting happened, uh, the what was it? Two days later, or two or three days later, Tom, they did a Trans Visibility Day, and they were saying, "Hey, guys, the trans community is under attack." No, no, no. Time out. A trans. Just shot and killed three kids and two of like what the hell are we what are we talking about? Like Can you this play this with the enactment of a new law in Indiana, 14 states have now banned gender affirming health care while some of these laws are currently blocked by courts. This is a dangerous, a dangerous attack on the rights of parents to make the best health care decisions for their own kids. According to the Human Rights Campaign, more than 50% of transgender youth in the U.S., which is estimated to be more than 150,000 kids, live in states in which transgender youth have lost oh access God. to or at risk of losing access to gender-affirming care. Look, this is awful news. Let's be very clear about that. LGBTQI plus kids are resilient. They are fierce. They fight back. Yeah. They're not going anywhere. Yeah. And we have their back. This administration has their back. We are so proud of the kids across this country who have organized protests and school walkouts to tell the politicians in their states to stop this legislative bully. You know, Pat, like, can you guys ex explain to me? They're, they're, you know why they're upset? You know why they're upset? Because... We're not letting them, these states, mess up their children's bodies and chop off their, their genitalia. What is the obsession with kids, Pat? Can you please explain, like, make me understand why that's what they're pushing for, the states that are banning that, that transition for kids that haven't even developed in their minds. And I've said it before on this podcast, what is the obsession with children? Is it because all that gender affirming care is that's big pharma? Because is that is it because it's money involved, Pat, or is it because those those people can't have kids and they want depopulation? Could somebody explain it to me? I don't get it. I don't understand. And now you're telling these people, hey, listen, get mad, get pissed off, be fierce, stand up. Like I don't get it. Yeah, and I'm confused. I'm very confused. Yeah, you know, you know. Again, for me, uh, I'd like to believe common sense prevails. You know, I'd like to believe we come to our senses. 
I'd like to believe, you know, that bad policies will eventually get exposed, right? But I also know in a situation like this, I can't show that meme enough. Can you go to the PBD podcast meme, that one meme about, you know, the you parents, try, no to this, drink, no to that, yeah. no to that, no to this. If you can pull that up, just go to Twitter to show that. But This meme honestly has to be shown so many times for people to keep repeating this statement to people for others to realize you know that this is common sense keep going down keep right there you know uh, uh, can you drive a car no can you pick your bedtime no can you drink a beer no can you vote no can you cut off your sex organs and take hormones yes oh my god dude. this doesn't make any sense whatsoever and even by the way again this whole concept of the west tate's criticism and other people's criticism of the west I had a guy yesterday came up to me who was at the, uh, the podcast show, and we had a very good conversation together. He's a Muslim. Mm -hmm. And he said, Pat, can I talk to you? I've, I love everything you're saying. He says, but, man, you you got you to gotta have a Muslim on to kind of hear our perspective. I'm not an extremist. Trust me, there's extremism in Muslim. I, I understand what you're saying. But, man, there's a lot of us that are good. I'm like, dude, in our company, in the insurance company, our Muslim community in the insurance company is growing. Mm -hmm. And we have a couple people in the company Freaking amazing, amazing people. Mm -hmm. Like, truly, you love them. Mm -hmm. Haas, Naveen, there's amazing, amazing people, right? Where you can sit down and have a conversation. The the fear becomes, well, you know, uh, uh, Muslim is growing, Christianity is, you know, not growing, and that, how are you competing? And then you listen to their argument. Now, this is not about Prophet. Do you know Prophet Muhammad married this, that, this big girl? I'm, I'm not having that debate. That's not the conversation I'm having in this context. Mm -hmm. I will tell you. One is compromising their values, the other's not, okay? One is saying, don't worry about it. Cut off your dangling. You're only seven years old. The other one's saying, what the hell are you talking about? Get the hell back in your room. Say that one more time. Yeah. So you're like, oh, my God, well, you're, you're such an extreme parent. The other one's saying, let her do whatever she wants to do. Why are you being on top of her the way you are compromising? Sure. The other one is saying, I'm the freaking father. I'm the freaking mother. You know what is starting to happen? Here's what's starting to happen. I remember I'm leading my uh, sales organization, and I'm working with folks, and my style was, hey, what else can I do to you? What else can I do to help you? Can I make some calls for you? Can I go run some appointments with you? Can I do this? I want to help. And I'm like, Damn, none of this shit is working. I'm 25 years old. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget this meeting I had. Mario tells the story better than I do. I'm 25 years old. I come in. I had a long weekend. Sunday, I'm at my office. I'm like busting my ass. I'm freaking doing my best, and nothing is happening. This is so annoying. And I sat there, and I said, I got a bunch of 18, 19-year-olds who are hooking up every day. I walk into the office on Sundays. They're hooking up because they don't have a place to go hook up. <laughs> they're, they're literally in the parking lot. Yeah. I'm walking. I'm like, okay, that guy's hooked up with that person. I know everybody that would walk in. Yeah. Eventually, I'm like, no. Here's what we're going to do. I come in Monday morning. I say, stand up if you're under 25 years old. They stood up. If you Stay standing if you're married, if you're single, stand in. Stay standing if you have no kids, no kids. I said, get out. What do you mean? Get out. What do you mean get out? I'm not working with you guys anymore. Get out. Go to a different company or a different office. I'm not working with you. Mario's in the room. I said, I'm going to give you five minutes. Get out. I'm not dealing with any of your bullshit anymore. Get out. One guy says, oh, 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 what happened to the Pat? That's, I said, I'm telling you, I don't like that Pat. That Pat is pissing me off. There's a new Pat in town, okay? Get out. One guy gets up, he gets out. The girl follows him. The girl's the girl that he was hooking up with. So yeah. follows him. I know all the stuff that's yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the next guy gets up and gets out. Next guy, I said, get out. So I'm looking at Mario. Get out. I'm not getting out. George, get out. I'm not getting out. Get out. I'm not getting out. 20 people walk out. Five people stick around. Mm -hmm. Mario's Mario. Of course. One guy, George. We paid George $1.5 million last year. He's now 35 years old. Married just about a $3 million house in, in freaking Austin. He's having a great time in his life. Okay, Cindy is a rock star. What she's doing, her family, she makes six hundred grand a year. She's 34, 35. She's from Palmdale. Both of these guys are from Palmdale. The people that stuck around became leaders. But I went from, hey... I, this, that. I'm like, no, get your ass up, run appointments, do this, do that, or else this is not the office for you. Now, 
Was it a little extreme? Yes. Did I need to learn to bring it back down at 26, 27, 28? Did I learn? Yes. That came with maturity. You know what Muslims are doing that Christians are not? Muslims are saying, get your ass out of bed and go do this. No, we don't stand up for this. Let Americans do this stuff. This is not us. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the hell you're talking about being so, you know, what is it, accommodating to everybody. Stop trying to please everybody, Christians. Some of your values are supposed to piss people off. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to get everybody to say this makes sense. There is a part of it that's a little bit extreme and high standards versus, you know, no, 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 it's okay. No, 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 it's okay. To me, the no, 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 it's okay is, Anybody can come to church. I, I Listen, I went to church. I'm sitting there talking to God. I'm like, do you realize what I just did this weekend? You want me out to go to church this Sunday? Do, do you really want to know what I did? If I tell you the story, you're going to get uncomfortable. Yeah. Let me tell you what I did. No, no, you don't need to tell us. <laughs> I'm telling you, you don't want me out to church. Yeah. I'm not. And then I went and sitting all the way in the back. I'm like, this guy's probably a this, this, that. And I start criticizing, saying all this stuff, right? I'm like, but I'm going to come back next Sunday because he's got good jokes. So I come back next Sunday. Do you realize I just came back every Sunday for a year and a half just because the guy was funny and I liked the way he told stories. Really? Then eventually I, you know, do what I do. My life, things change. But we, you, Tom, myself, all of us in here, deep down inside, you know what we deep down inside love and we know we need, even though we fight it, strong leadership. 100%. We need it. You need it. America needs it. Kids need it. The West if the criticism is a fair criticism to give the West, you're getting soft. 100%. And you're compromising your values, and it's a pathetic, weak move that's going to hurt you long term. It ain't too late yet to go back to the same old standards to, and just say, what the hell are you talking about cutting these things off? Yeah. Well, what, do you, what do you mean? No, no, this is not acceptable. You cannot do things like this. So my hopes is that... We're going to eventually get our heads out of our asses and realize common sense prevails and bad policies get exposed. A lot of them are starting to get exposed, and we're going to get back to some normal normality. But it's only going to happen with a strong leader that's going to come and knock some senses into the West because the West is a little bit drunk right now. They're high. They're taking one too many sleeping pills. They're a little bit too soft. They're compromising, and they, they need to realize we've led the world. We have set the tone to the world. U.S. has set the tone to everybody else. They follow U.S.'s lead, not the other way around. Now we're following other people's leads. Time out. Yeah. What the hell are we doing here? Yeah. So, and uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm in America because I love what America stood for, not what America's standing for today. What America mm -hmm. stood for is why I came to America, yeah. why I love this place. Some of the shit we're standing for today, I don't stand for that stuff. Well, Pat, I, I think the, A, this comes down to the soft parents, number one, and number two, all this started happening, all this started happening, I think a generation or two pet after mine, Adam, were disciplining your kids, like you were saying, not beating them, people always take that out of context, disciplining your kids became taboo, it became, don't touch that, hey, hey, a little, hey, don't touch that, to now the kids are like, oh, I could, oh you're not gonna do anything, Jimmy, don't, well, remember we told you, to now Jimmy's going, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna become a girl, and you can't, do anything about it, Dad. There's no hope. And then what do you say to people that they're like, okay, now these parents are going to the schools because the school has a big part of it. But then when you try to speak up in the school, they're labeling you a uh, domestic terrorist. Like there's no, there's no hope. Like I, I feel your, I love your optimism, Pat. But I don't think. And then when the White House is sta standing up there in front of you saying, hey, let, let us, let the system take your, your, you know, hormone therapy for your kids. And and dude, it's there's no winning. For the parents, so these these kids have no hope. I don't, I don't. I don't think the quality of being helpless or feeling like you've lost hope is a good strategy ever, uh, because you know, kind of like same thing I said to Rudy yesterday when Rudy and I had a big back and forth. I don't know how long for like twenty minutes. I'm like, <laughs> this whole thing about you know, well, they cheated, they did this. I'm like, honestly, I can't stand it when my kids when they lose and Dylan or Tico or they cheated. I'm like, listen, I, I don't care if they cheated. Be better, because. I can cheat all I want. If I play one-on-one -on -one against Kobe, he's still going to beat me. I can cheat all I want. If I play against Jordan, he's still going to beat me. It doesn't matter. The great ones, you can cheat, and they're still going to whoop your ass, right? So for me, this, this, this concept of when you say they cheated, the other side doesn't want to show up because in their mind they're thinking, oh, they're going to cheat anyway, so we're going to lose. Why should I even show up and vote? No, stop saying that. 
Just show up. Let's show up more. Get more people to rally. Have a party. Get thousands of people to go with you to vote. Be a better rallier at getting people to show up and vote. So for me, I think the moment hope is gone, people don't want to put the energy to fight because they're thinking they're hopeless. They're helpless. We're not. Historically, leaders have risen. Historically, they rise up. Till today, I saw something the other day. It was so freaking emotional. I'd love to play it because it plays a song I love a lot by Hillsong Oceans. And it's a clip of a guy. I, I want to give it to you, Rob, without you playing the music. The music makes the video so much more freaking emotional. But I'm going to give it to you anyways. And I want you just, Rob, do me a favor. Try to do without playing the music so this video stays on. It, it's, it's so freaking heartbreaking when you watch this. But at the end, you have to respect mankind because we freaking care. Mm -hmm. Mankind cares. Mankind, I'm getting the chills just thinking about I this right now. Bumps. Dude, we, we love people, man. We don't like bullies and scumbags. We're willing to stand up and give hope to other people. Here's a guy here in this video that's pouring benzene or gas on top of him to nice. commit suicide. And watch what happens at the end. I just want you to see and this. And this is real? He's watch, really doing yeah, this? Watch this. Watch this. Right in the middle of it. Everybody's smelling it. They're stepping away. He's taking a lighter out. Everyone starts running. Look, these guys are the pansies. They're running. But watch what happens. Watch what she does. That's what I'm talking about. She takes the lighter away from him. Like, you can't kill yourself, bro. You can't give up. Life is worth it. You're going through a tough time. This message is America. This is us. We have to fight for each other. We have to tell each other, listen, bro, I don't know what the fuck are you thinking right now. Wow. You've lost your mind. You don't sound right. You don't sound reasonable. Mm -hmm. Think about your kids. Think about the future. Think about each other. What are you doing to yourself? Uh, America, if, if we come from that place and we look at each other and we say, dude, come on, snap out of it. Go take a damn cold shower. Mm -hmm. You're better than this. I had a guy that was working for me every, every day for a month. He knows who he is. Every day for a month. We would go to this lunch place. I won't even say the place because some people are going to try to calculate exactly who it was. Every day at lunch, he would talk to me about suicide. Every day. And I would sit there. I'm like, dude, I'm telling you, bro. Just trust me. This shit's not going to last this long. It's going to suck for two years. But I'm telling you, good things are around the corner, bro. What are you talking? I says, Pat, what is life worth? I'm like, I'm telling you. And by the way, this is not the guy that wants attention. This is a guy that was a guy that doesn't want attention. He's not saying this to everybody. He's just telling me this, talking to me like a brother. Do you know how he's doing today? Freaking amazing life. So happy when I saw him. We saw each other. We gave each other a hug. And, you know, the conversation was like, you know when you look at somebody in the eyes and you know that they know that you know that they know and you like you cry yeah. without saying anything? Yeah. That's this. America changed my life. America's changed so many people's lives. We need to go back to selling how freaking amazing of a concept this was and can be. But we cannot just give up hope and be helpless thinking we can't do anything about it. Okay? Look, one thing I know about myself. I'm a sinner at the highest level. I am perfect. I've done some stupid shit in my life. I've done, I've said stuff. I've done this. I've done that. I've done this. I don't see myself as a guy that's perfect. We can't have a standard of perfection right now. Nobody's perfect. Nobody knows it all. None of us, no matter how much money you got, no matter how good you look, no matter how many followers you got, nobody cares. We all have flaws, all of us. We have to strive to get better. We have to strive to get our arguments to be better. We have to strive to become better fathers, better husbands, better wives, better brothers, better sisters, better contributors to society. Where you're sitting there debating the argument of four days a week and you're actually saying that's a good argument. That's a selfish argument to me because you have talent to give to the rest of us. God gave you certain talent where if you do something with your talents, we're going to benefit from it. What a selfish position to only put four hours, four weeks into it. Why don't you contribute just like we're doing our best to contribute? Let's collectively work together. I think those are the arguments that need to be delivered in a better way for people to say, damn, that kind of does make sense. What am I doing? But that video I saw, man, I watched that video. I'm going to give it to you guys afterwards to watch because you're going to watch. We'll watch it afterwards with music on. Okay. Watch how you'll feel it. Okay. You'll see it in a very different way. Anyways, sorry about the rant. I just said, no. you know, this really I, triggered me with a no, thought. No, it's all good. I, number one, I love, I love when Pat goes off on this Hell because yeah. this is coming. It's not, it's not no script. Yeah. You're not reading no speech. This is from the heart. And I'll just kind of maybe try to put a, a ribbon on this. You know, this conversation started with Vinny bringing up the transgender 
or speaking out against transgender. What's the swimmer's name? Riley Gaines. Uh, Riley Gaines. She Basically, had you know, she's famous because she was the one competing against this Leah Thomas person. Yeah. Okay, that's how she became to notoriety. And you know what I'm thinking about as you're saying this and you're saying this and you're saying this, and I'll keep revisiting this well, is the decline in American values that we just talked about the other day. Okay, in patriotism, in community involvement, in religion, in wanting kids. The only thing that did go up was wanting money. Mm -hmm. And I think what you're talking about is can we just get back to normal? And that's why this girl, Riley Gaines, is saying, hey, I'm a woman. Yeah. I lost the race to this dude over here. Yeah. Okay. And now I want to speak out and tell my story. And now I'm getting shamed because I'm a woman and I... What happened to the feminism thing? Can I yeah. believe what happened with that? And I think what Pat's saying is that what he did in that office, what he does with these kids is I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. I'm not going to lower my standards. Yeah. And I think what we're seeing is that America is lowering in our standards oh, and accepting nonsensical things yep. to be today's reality. And here I'm going to call out fucking Joe Biden for a second right now. Okay. Because okay. I'm gonna call, if I'm going to call out Trump, I'm also going to call out Biden. So Biden says the other day, this is after the shooting, he says, quote unquote, transgender people shape our nation's soul in official proclamation. Let me just read this real yeah, quick. Go ahead. He issued an official proclamation declaring that transgender Americans shape our nation's soul and establish an American holiday relating to this group. He, he issued this on March 31st. Transgender Americans shape our nation's soul, proudly serving in the military, curing deadly diseases, holding elected office, running thriving businesses, fighting for justice, raising families, and much more. All right, listen, uh, Joe Biden. Uh, transgender people are point five of one percent of our nation yeah okay do they deserve to be treated like human beings do of they course. deserve to be of course treated with respect sure but who shapes our nation's souls our families yeah. our people with kids yeah. our people that have grandparents and aunts and uncles and families and kids and american family values that is our nation's soul yeah okay transgender might be a sliver of what's going on here yep. but they are not the ones shaping no. our nation's soul I agree and this pandering yep. to the woke left yep. so they can fucking get 0.5% of people's votes yeah. is nonsensical to me 100% and I totally understand to revisit this exactly why Riley Gaines is like hey uh, I'm just a female swimmer over here trying to compete against women. Yeah. And you got this dude over here who's 6'5", lurch, yeah. beating me. <laughs> it's yeah. like, this doesn't make sense. Any sense. And, uh, it, and to back to pack credit, this shit just doesn't add up. Yeah, and you made a, you made a great point, Adam. Where are all, and I'm being genuine, I'm calling them out. Where are all the, fe the genuine feminists? The Lena uh, Dunham, Alyssa Milano, the Beyonce's, all of them. Where are you at? You have... Like it, you morons! It doesn't bother you that, mm -hmm. like, girl, like for instance, look at this picture right here. Yeah, yeah. Let me. I mean, yeah. like, uh, you know how they say a picture says a thousand words. Yeah. Like, That's just it. look at the picture. Yeah, like the lady on the left, wink, wink. Yeah, she and, beat the other lady. And Tom, here, Tom, here's it's my so point. No, it's fucking absurd. absurd. And remember, it's so all, absurd. They shared a locker room. All these folks did, and that guy still had equipment. So he was still packing heat. Yeah, well, he has. Yeah, unbelievable. So, and, and, and Tom, Tom, you have children. Pat, you have children. Let me ask you a question. Unbelievable. You guys have. You Rob, try to zoom in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I got you, Rob. Yeah. Rob is well, like, let me take zoom it to you. In. So, so, <laughs> so, so here's my point, Tom, because I would ask you and Pat. Trans you guys, volleyball. Trans yeah, volleyball. You guys have. You have children, Pat. You have a daughter, Tom. You have daughters. So Pat, what? How do you feel? What do you do? You have a daughter, right? Senna, you have, you have your daughter. They, she she works her whole childhood. You have her in swimming. She busts her ass. She's honing her craft. She's sacrificing going out with her friends. No movies, no boyfriend. Her entire youth, is it's, she sacrificed to be the best swimmer. Then she's about to go to college and loses a scholarship, her place, because there's a dude with testicles that wants to be in there, and nobody says anything. People are... Praising them. What do you do as a father? What's your reaction? What do you do? Oh, you, you, you're going to have to speak up and say something about it and, and defend your daughter who's been training hard and, you know, go and do your part to get involved on a board and have a voice and call the people out. You can't sit on the sidelines, be quiet about it. You have to create a voice and say something about it. 
and defend your daughter because this is demoralizing to your daughter. Mm -hmm. This this is demo if you don't have that conversation with her, this is very demoralizing. It's, it's surprising that the feminists are are defending this. They de and they're or they're quiet. But, they're you know, silent. But, but I but but I'm so like for me. Uh, uh, Tom, I, I, you wanted to say something. You have two girls yourself as well. So what would you say about what Vinny just said right there? So I think that I step back at it and I look at it, and I've been quiet for a few minutes here uh, intentionally. I step back and I look at it and I say, okay, there is a new entitlement group out there. There is a new marginalized group, and it's called trans. And the media will cancel you, cost you your job, cost you your reputation, and attack you. If you go against the narrative that trans is a new, marginalized, discriminated against group. So you have true feminists that fought like hell for Title IX. Title IX, you know, in college sports said that women's college sports should get the same funding and opportunity as men college sports. Thank you very much. And that there were some sports that will be unique to men football and there are going to be some sports that were unique to women ballet and dance you know ballet there's dance but there's you know what i'm talking about so number one that's where it started right now you have i haven't spoken to any college coach i've ever seen i've asked this question and i said should we should we respect that for whatever reason they are declaring themselves trans well yeah if that's their end of the okay but if they're going to say that, and a male is going to say, I identify as female. Uh, okay, but but still, if we run a blood test and everything, you got your testosterone and everything like this. I'll tell you what. We fought like heck for Title IX to give women the opportunity. All you men that want to compete in Division II of men, you compete against yourselves. Trans compete against trans. Leave natural men or what they call cis men, and leave cis women to themselves and let the trans compete against trans yep. because it is not equal. It says, Rob, there is a, um, an article, and this is serious, because there is different physiological things. Look at the size of the swimmers, size 13 feet. Find me a woman with size 13 <laughs> feet. Mm -hmm. You'll find one in the USA, female swimmer with a size 13 foot. Men, they're all size 13, 14, <laughs> and 15, and they have longer arms. They are mechanically superior in the water. They're just mechanically superior. Now, look at this. Trans high school volleyball player. Male who wanted to be known as a female uses a vicious spike, which injured the female opponent in a highlight reel. <laughs> and so then guess what they did here? This is North Carolina, right? North Carolina said, stop. Scroll down, Rob. Trans, trans men cannot compete with women because of the difference in size and strength. Let's let trans compete against trans. trans. Have women over here, trans over here, men over here. This guy knocked her freaking out. He knocked is her it? out. Is this is a man. Oh. Yeah. So you're saying have a trans league, Tom. Have watch a trans this. league. Watch this one. Watch this one. Oh, so, oh, is, it, is that a guy? No, they're, they're about to. There's another clip. Apparently, that girl to the left is, got, is about to get. Oh, oh dude. This guy is vicious. Oh, that's a guy. That's a guy? Oh, that's a dude. That's right. These are all the guys. Got it. Right. Nuts and all, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Bow! <laughs> yeah, well, I'll say one thing about this. The speed, they've looked at it. The speed off the spike and the, the level of, of jumping was different. And so how can you say, so what do I say? First of all, I see it as a form of cheating. I see it absolutely as a form of cheating, of using the trans excuse to go win the NCAA tournament leah i'm talking to you first second the ncaa after all these years of title nine we're completely turning our backs on all the progress we made for women let the trans compete as trans let women compete as women let men compete as as men if the school's got enough budgets they can have trans team great otherwise go raise the money for your team just like regular teams do and i see it as a form of cheating and so what do i do with my, my kids i talk to my daughters there's going to be cheating. People are going to want to cheat. Don't be one of them. And don't be don't be discouraged after the fact. You're going to be discouraged in the moment. You're going to feel ripped off. You're going to feel emotions. You're going to feel cheated. You're going to feel robbed. You know, Bailey's team for golf lost the Texas State Championship because one of her players was baited into what's called not moving a mark back on the green. Baited.
on the last hole, and it was a two-stroke penalty, and they lost by one. Wow. And I said, you know what you have to carry, Bailey? You have to carry the fact that you won on the course. Wow. All the practice, all the effort, all the energy, all the dedication, all the, the things, winning your league, winning your region, winning your district, then winning your region, going there, you won the Texas State Golf Championship as a team. That, you were baited. Now, was the... The penalty was appropriate, but you were that player was baited, and that's not right. And they all suffered the indignity of the opposing coach saying, I never saw it, but on the 17th and 18th green, you had parents with camera phones all over the place saying, baloney, that's you right there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. What do you mean you never saw it? Those are your arms crossed with your coach visor quietly looking at your player making a putt. That's you. Yeah. And so, listen. The cheating part of it, it's going to happen in life. Don't let that be you. Allow your emotions to come to the surface because they're normal human emotions. Don't Adam. suppress your emotions. Well, I'll, just, I'll just let my final thoughts. Number one, shout out to Bailey. You know, yeah, keep up good, the good job, work, girl. Bailey. Let's and go. And Brooker out there. Prediction time. So I guess I'd gone Prediction. Prediction. Coming. Okay. Uh, that was you know, great, Tom. Everything. At the end of the day, I think there's going to be some sort of come to Jesus, jump the shark moment where we're like, we can't look past this anymore. And it's not going to be in sports like swimming or volleyball or tennis or golf where you're not competing physically against the other person. Yeah. Unfortunately, the sad reality of this is going to happen in a fucking boxing ring yep. or a wrestling match yep. where some trans dude shows up and beats the living shit death. out of some chick. It's yeah. going to be a permanent injury. And she's going to get up. Concussion, die. brain hemorrhage, die. He might rip her limbs off and beat her with her <laughs> limbs. I don't know what kind of gorilla shit might happen. But, but, by the way, but unfortunately, that's what might happen. But, here. But, by the way, the, you, you're you're absolutely right. Okay, so for me, when when one of our sales guys or sometimes the kids come up with an idea that I know it's a bad idea, mm -hmm. sometimes I let them do it and I'll <laughs> say, oh, okay, yeah, you know what? Go ahead and do it. Good, do it. Do it and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they'll go and they'll do it, and then all of a sudden they'll be like, hey, you know. Uh, uh, it didn't work. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's good. Now you know it doesn't work. So go back to what does work instead of going to. Sometimes you have to allow bad ideas to take effect for us to eventually see the data and say this didn't work. Before we get into Fed now, I want to talk yeah, about yeah. Fed now before we wrap up. We got eight minutes left. Yeah. A lot of, you know, when people say Kobe Bryant's inspiration, he got his inspiration and aspirations from who? Who was the guy that he looked up to? He, wanted to be, MJ, he wanted to be. He wanted to be like Mike. LeBron wanted to be like who? Okay, he, he well, LeBron, maybe a magic, magic maybe magic a Mike, and, you know, yeah, yeah. some of those guys. Tom Brady wanted to be like who? His dad. His Joe dad? Montana. But Tom, Joe Montana, right? Yeah. Joe Montana. You know, we finally figured out who Dylan Mulvaney wanted to be like. Who? Can you please show this to us? So who we does know. he want to be? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jim Jim Carrey. That's where. Oh the, my God! Now it all makes sense. Oh my! That's God. where the hey inspiration Today came from. Pat, work you know, Pat I, I, I know you know this. Dylan Mulvaney, trans dude. You know that like, he, he is the have boobs. No, no. Well, no. He no. Listen to me. He she, whatever. Dick, I don't want whatever you want to call him. He is not only the sponsor, now the spokesperson of Bud Light. Let me explain something to you, and it pissed off Kelly uh, the other day when she heard it. She is the, the spokesperson for tampons. tampons. Yeah, tampons. You, tampons. That what, uh, it, try to ex explain to me how a dude, because he still has his, his male parts. Am I, mm -hmm. am I correct to assume that? What is he, he is using a tampon? He's no surgeries. He's self No surgeries. His name is still Dylan. You, how is tampon? I, I, I don't even know what to say. Like, well, let's go to the last story because we only got a couple okay, minutes I'm, left. I'm, so, okay. congratulations to him for yeah. however Getting magic sponsors. he pulled to get that. Yeah. That's sports. But Rob, can you pull up Joe the story, head, guys? Like, we got to do this in world. seven minutes because we got elite mastermind. So, while you're pulling this up, I'll read the title: DeSantis and RFK Jr. misconstrue. Fed's digital plans and warning of government overreach. Now, obviously, NBC is defending. The Fed now, uh, 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 you know, what they've come out with. So th this, this is the Fed-made digital dollar that they're talking about. Here's what DeSantis had to say about this. So Florida Governor DeSantis alleged last week that a Fed-made digital U.S. dollar would let government block transactions like buying a rifle or filling up with too much gas.
He added, speaking at a Pennsylvania conference on Saturday, they are going to try to impose an ESG agenda referring to the private sector policy uh, aimed at advancing environmental and social governance principles, which conservative lawmakers across the country have been pushing to curb. It is ceding the power of our financial freedom to to a central bank, which does not have our interests at heart. The Republican governor has who has been widely floated as a potential primary rival to President Trump, has introduced legislation in Florida seeking to ban the use of any Fed-issued digital currency in the state and has called on other states to do the same. The Fed is uh, 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 re-adying its Fed Now initiative, which aims to shorten the time it takes for banks to send funds to other banks for a planned July rollout. Separately, it has also been exploring the possibility of issuing a digital version of the dollar that households could readily use instead of cash. The central bank issue currency would be used in digital wallets offered by the private sector, including uh, by consumer leaders. Now, Powell said... We haven't decided that this is something that the financial system in the country would want or need, so that's going to be very important. That's what Powell said, okay? And then DeSantis' comments came within days of remarks of an anti-vaccine activist Robert uh, uh, F. Kennedy, they have to put it that way, who tweeted Wednesday that a Fed-issued currency would allow the government to surveil all our private affairs, Mm -hmm. financial affairs, enforce dollar limits on our transactions, restricting where you can send money, freeze your assets, or limit your spending or approved to approved vendors if you fail to comply with arbitrary uh, uh, vaccine uh, uh, mandates like it's another one of that. Tom, when you see this, what do you think about this? Well, I think about the danger it poses to the nation's strippers, because <laughs> because where I saw Tom going. Tom. If it's if it's digital and it's on Dirty your phone, man. some guy's gonna go in to a strip club, yeah. said I'm gonna make it rain in here, and he's gonna be throwing his phone, <laughs> and she could get hurt. <laughs> No, this, what I think here, I think there's some truth to it that if the, the, the issue is it's not just a digital dollar, it's all the tracking. Now, on one hand, they say, well, now then people can't cheat on taxes and this and this and this. And, and I, I think that there's, you know, the whole concept. The, first of all, what they're talking about up above in that digital systems that are all, you know, aligned, we have to take a look and step back and look at convenience. For instance, does anybody remember when you had to look at the back of your ATM card, maybe when you were 18 years old, and the symbol had to be at an ATM that was on the back of your card? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Oh, is this your 7-Eleven plus system? Oh, I'm plus system with my Wells Fargo card. I can get money here. Well, now it's completely ubiquitous. You can go to any ATM and get money with your card. That's how the banking system got it together, so it made it convenient for people to go get money wherever they want to get money. So part of this is we're going to make it easy for the banks to work with each other and instantly transfer overnight. That's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Pay your car loan because it'll be with a bank. Pay your credit card. It's with a bank. That part is good. And then the um, the ATM part of that that I just described, which is true history, that is a good, helpful thing moving it forward. What people are worried about is if the government through a digital currency also has the ability to digitally track everything. And when you see what happened to, you may not like it, but you see what happened to Andrew Tate, who had his stripe turned off because stripe was told, turn him off. Wow. And they turned him off as part of a canceling effort. The danger is you can have canceling efforts, which has never happened except for Stripe, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, people getting canceled everywhere. You can't have a canceling effect out there. That part makes me very worried. And this, Pat, mind you, this, this, we heard this story yesterday. Uh, isn't it just random that the Cash App guy gets stabbed to death and dies in San Francisco? I, I don't want to go they, there. Let's wait just, until we see the films and everything. And yeah, I, but I I'm hope, just saying it's very weird, though, isn't it? Like the well, cash, and then I hope it's this. not deep like that. It's I mean, a horrible tragedy. 100%. And I don't hope to see one thing or another, but it appears to be a random mugging killing, and I hope it's not something deep like that. Me neither, but it's just random. Just to be clear, happens. we are talking about central bank digital currencies, right? Yeah. CBDCs. And I I think that the biggest concern that people have with this is more government control. And now it's control, not over your life, just you, now they're controlling your money. It's over. And whether it's like your taxes, whether you didn't pay a parking ticket, they can freeze your assets. Oh, you didn't get vaccinated? Well, t- so we're going to we're gonna take your uh, your wages, garnish your wages. We're you didn't turn do your we- money off. We oh, we're going to turn off. you off. So w- we were talking yesterday about the Patriot Act. 
and government surveillance. And now this new thing that just been rolled out less than a month ago that Charlie Kirk was talking about, the Restrict Act. It's And we're also seeing what's happening with the biggest concern with the banking right now is the nationalization of banks. It's like, oh, no, banks are – certain banks can't fail now. Too big to fail. This nationalization of money now with these central bank digital currencies – I think is a way bigger concern than people understand. This is not Bitcoin. This is not, you know, just, hey, you know, your money can't be tracked. There's, it's decentralized currency. No, this is centralized currency. This is big brother coin. This is big brother coin, exactly. <laughs> so I think this is a big concern. My fear is that they're going to market it in a way that it's like, it's going to make life easier. Of course. Pay your taxes online. Do everything online. This is some big brother shit. This is what happens in China. Because in China, don't they have something called a social credit score? Yes. Isn't that something? I don't know, if Rob, you can pull that up. Oh, you said something about she? Uh, you go to jail now. Like, yeah. you, you, you don't do anything that the government doesn't want you to do. It's jail time. So here. Neighbors, China's social neighbors credit turn system. You in if you're exactly. With the third child. This is this is Russia. Can you read that, Adam? Yeah. So R China's social social credit system gives individuals, businesses, and government entities a credit score based on their <laughs> trustworthiness. <laughs> a bad credit score will have penalties like reduced access to credit and fewer fewer business opportunities. Wow. And lumps How on do your you head. measure yeah. And by the way, the establishment, the establishment in America loves seeing how China has such control over its people. That's their hero to see, hey, how can we have more control over our people so none of them can come and push back with what we have to say and what our agenda is. Anyways, it's obviously a, a, a idea that a lot of people are concerned about. And it makes sense why you ought to be concerned about something mm -hmm. like this. Let free market do it because you can always have a choice to go somewhere, somewhere else. If they do it, they can control you in, in ways free market cannot. Anyways, great podcast today. Great podcast yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, again, for some of you guys that are watching this, you want to be the first to know. We're about to make three major announcements in the next four weeks. One of them is going to be massive. I think one is bigger than the other one. So stay tuned. I wish I knew. Uh, uh, no, he won't you, tell you, us no, anything. You, I it's hate a massive, that. massive announcement. I'm excited to announce it's finalized. So I can I can say it's here because we signed a contract yesterday. It's going to be big. Can't wait to announce that part. Dylan but, uh, Mulvaney's coming here. <laughs> yeah, he's going to oh, be on the podcast. Oh, with tampons and his Bud Lights. Oh my gosh, we got to ask on how did you get how'd you get all those deals? <laughs> For those of you guys that want to be informed, the next time we have a guest at the podcast and you want to be the first to know about it, text the word podcast to three one zero three four zero one one three two. Once again, text the word podcast to three one zero three four zero one one three two. One last thing, because it's the weekend. Sorry, sorry to cut you yeah. off, but we have to do this. It's a very important weekend. Why? This is Easter weekend. We're in the middle of Ramadan, and it's also Passover. Oh, wow. So one of our beautiful value tainers brought you, Pat, some matzah. <laughs> so you try. These are the Mexican version of tortillas and uh, <laughs> chips. So we'll have some matzah, but I wanted to make sure to give our Muslim friends some credit I think on Ramadan. Who is the person, Adam? Oh, who this, who, who was it? Who was okay. it? Yeah, let's give him a shout out. I saw, they, him, I saw him at the front. They gave gifts to Rudy. They yeah, gave I saw gifts. him in the front. What was his name? Okay. His, mother, his mother sent them. They didn't even sign their name. Not even their let, name. Let me okay. see. Go ahead. There's got to be some of them. Hi, Adam. Aliza. Okay. Eisenberg. Thank you so okay. much. Adam needs to learn how to Eliza, read. Eliza, thank hey, you. Uh, uh, thank you, Eliza, for this gift here. Appreciate Eliza, you. yes. Hey, um, happy Easter. Have a happy great everything. weekend. We'll do it again next week, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye, bye-bye.